Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Media Studios worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, I've got Keith King, president of the National Veterans Business Development Council, and the web address is nvbdc.org. All right, Keith, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Michael. It's good to be here. All right, my pleasure. You know, you, you're doing great things for our veterans. Let me let me back up and give you a chance uh, to to bring out some of the flavor, some of the guidance skills that you bring to the National Veterans Business Development Council. Well, what we're making sure that we do is that we provide with the veterans who own their own business a certification program that federal government has their own, but what we wanted to do was open up corporate America or the opportunity to do business with various corporations in uh, America. And what they said to us was is they wanted a certification program that they could rely on that not only proves ownership, but control and operation of the companies. And so two years ago, we set out to create a certification program to meet those standards and uh, we're in, thankfully we we've, we've reached that goal and that's why we're out talking today you're getting a lot of support from the business community i, I think the other day we spoke your general motors kellogg's the billion dollar round table the top 19 companies in the united states they're all getting involved with you we'll open that up for us well what happened is, is is that when we approached these corporations and said hey you know you are spending Again, the billion dollar round table, a billion dollars or more with women and or minority owned companies. Why are you not spending money with veteran owned? And especially when you look at the federal government requirements that say 3% of all uh, spend, if you will, for, of the federal government was earmarked for veteran or disabled veteran businesses. And if you are doing business with the federal government, getting contracts like most of those large corporations have, they are also obligated to reach that same 3% spend, but they haven't. And when you look at the size of that market in the sense of 3% of corporate America spend represents about $80 billion potential to veteran-owned companies, and we're virtually getting zero. So once we had the conversations and said, okay, what do we need to do? They're the ones who were very adamant about creating a certification, and I always love this part, that meets their requirements. And I said, okay, <laughs> tell me what your requirements are, and we'll see if we can meet them. And, uh, and, and thankfully, we've gotten a lot of support, and uh, we have created a program that meets those requirements. Okay. Uh, well, you're also, it's not just corporate America because colleges and universities are getting getting in the uh, the game with you. Give us some, some parameters of some of the requirements that are, you know, that, that you've got to meet to, be, to get these people what you've done and, and, and get them involved with you. Well, one of the things that happens, and, and again, it, it, it doesn't seem like much on the surface, but as a matter of fact, it, it's interesting because I just got a, a, a blast this morning that uh, a couple of universities, research universities here in Michigan have gotten $21 million in, in, in new funding to do whatever research programs are out at their hospitals and their universities. Well, those same colleges and universities uh, you know, uh, also are required to meet the women, minority, and veteran-owned spend. And what we started doing in talking to the local colleges, and the example I use is I had one of the supplier diversity managers simply say, look, Keith, if you can bring me a certified veteran-owned business that can do, you know, mow lawns, I mean, you can be a landscaper, mow lawns, I'll hire them today. And what we're trying to make sure that we do is get out this message not only to the, the veteran-owned businesses, but to look at that in that kind of setting. So, you know, this is not just big corporate America. These are colleges all over America, universities, hospitals, all of these facilities that do receive federal grants and federal funds that are potentially available for our certified veteran businesses to approach and say, hey, you know, can you use our services? So we're trying to open up a whole new arena of business under the, you know, 
the, the the certification as a veteran business. All right, tell us how you help veterans start their own businesses. Well, first and foremost, we take a look at where they are in the process. The good news is, is with the SBA and, and, and all of the other organizations that are out there who can take you, uh, SCORE is a great program. Uh, SCORE is, is a part of the SBA that's the retired executives who will actually help mentor and train somebody trying to go into business. So that's what we start at. We look at where are you in your process. And then once we understand if you're brand new, just beginning, getting all your business plans together, your capability studies, all the different things that you're going to need to do to be able to go out and start talking to people about your company. So we look at that. We try to make sure that we help plug you into the right people. If you're up and running, we want to know where you're at with that. And again, it's more of a mentorship at that point because what we'll do is say, okay, here's what you need to do to be prepared to go and start talking to these potential customers and so we're really very hands-on all the way up and down the chain. Um, the good news uh, for us and, and something that's very exciting is, is, is that the government by law does not certify medium or large companies. They only certify small. And for the first time ever, we were able to complete the paperwork and certify a large company who obviously very successful but could not – you know, ever receive any kind of certification or, or awareness of the fact that he's actually a veteran-owned company. We've now certified a large company, and to us, that was historic. What about ongoing education? I'm familiar with incubators and accelerators, and it's a similar, very same concept, but ongoing education is to assure success after the launch and the initial beginnings of, of a cash flow in a business. Well, again, part of all of that is, is, is what we're looking at in the sense of our ability in, in training and entrepreneurship in general. Um, like you said, Michael, you know, there are a lot of people out there, a lot of companies doing this kind of work. We're, you know, the real deal in the sense that, you know, all of my officers, all of my board of directors are all business people. We've been there. We've done that. And so when we sit down and, and, and when we have our own entrepreneurial training program as part of, of our overall service to our veteran businesses, again, it's very hands-on in the sense of saying, okay, where are you? What are you doing? And really try to, if you will, lay out a game plan. Being, you know, veterans, we're used to plan A and plan B. We're used to putting strategies together. You know, we're used to running operations. And so uh, in many cases, it we almost look at it like a military operation and say, okay, you know, here's where you're at. Here's your objective. How do we meet that objective? Let's go to work. Well, wow. that's, that's amazing stuff. All right, let's, uh, let, we're going to go to a break here real shortly. But before we do, do you have any events uh, that are coming up or, or ways that the people listening to the show can contact you for further information? Yeah, there, we have two two really big events, one coming up at the end of October in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It is the Veteran Business Conference up there. We are actually going to be, be presenting not only the NVBDC, but the presentation is about interacting with corporate uh, America in the sense of working with um, their – their chain of command and understanding supplier diversity. And then the next really big one is in Atlanta uh, in December. That is the National Veteran Business Conference there where they are expecting over 4,000 veteran businesses. Virtually every department of the government will be there. And we have already been selected, again, as one of their major presenters. And uh, we'd love to have you guys show up um, in Atlanta if you can't make Grand Rapids. Okay, great. And the website again? Again, it's nvbdc.org, and the initials, I know the acronyms, but it's National Veteran Business Development Council.org. Got it. All right, Keith, let's talk about some more stuff on the other side of this break. Right, we'll be right back with Keith King, President, National Veterans Business Development Council, and that's nvdbc.org on the other side of this break. And we're going to go into minorities and women and, and the uh, federal programs that are coming out that uh, Keith and his group of uh, board of directors are working with. We'll be right back on the other side of this break. And special thanks to 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR and media support.
From the North Texas Traffic Center in Dallas, we did have an accident, 635 LBJ Freeway westbound at Plano Road, but that has just recently cleared up. Still seeing a little bit of a delay in that area, and we did have a problem out in Bedford, 183 in that express lane, heading eastbound just before Brown Trail, but that is also cleared up as well. Still finding a bit of a slowdown out on 30, heading westbound between Dalton Road and 35E. You're adding just about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm Heather Anderson with your KFXR Traffic. When life gets too loud, there's always music. Millions of songs, thousands of stations, one free app. iHeartRadio is that easy. Download the app today or listen online at iHeartRadio.com. Join us this Saturday at Prestonwood Polo Club in Oak Point as we present world-class polo right here in North Texas. Watch the thrilling sport of polo and thoroughbred horses racing down the field. Bring your family and friends and enjoy the traditional champagne divot stomp. It's the best tailgate in North Texas. So pack a picnic and join us this Saturday for world-class polo right here in North Texas. For more information and tickets, go to PrestonwoodPoloClub.com. That's PrestonwoodPoloClub.com. The Garage is a business accelerator and investment fund looking for new ideas in technology, manufacturing, and consumer goods. Our 90-day intensive workshops, taught by entrepreneur mentors, are focused on one thing, helping you make money faster. Each week, you'll experience a class taught by successful entrepreneurs with the guidance of experienced mentors in your field. We get you to revenue faster and help you find investors when the time is right. To learn why we're different, go to workthegarage.com. That's workthegarage.com. Are you keeping pace with the change in business development technology? Make the job of your sales team easier and lower cost. The world is moving to mobile apps. Digital publishing is the way of the future. For less than $90 a month, Cookie can create a professional mobile app for your company. If you don't have one now, you'll be left behind. Make marketing more powerful, more successful. Big results don't need big production and big costs anymore. Contact cookie.com now. Cookie is the solution for you to create content live, easily, and fast to your own mobile applications. Cookie.com. K O O K E.com. Hi, I'm Glenn Beck, founder of The Blaze TV. We built The Blaze to cover the stories that no one else covers, to ask the questions that nobody else asks. It's home to my nightly TV program at 5, and The Blaze TV features programs that explore and expose the truth, putting the news in context and offering the perspective that you're just not going to find anyplace else. Start your free 30-day trial today. Visit theblaze.com slash free month and start getting the stories that matter. That's theblaze.com slash free month. From the Mini Cooper Weather Center, today morning clouds gives way to afternoon sun, high of 81. Tonight, fair skies, low of 60. This report is brought to you by Pat Loeb's Toyota of McKinney. 2014 Tundra Crew Max Special Edition with approved credit. It's 2014 Model Closeout at Pat Loeb Toyota of McKinney. Get 12,000 total savings on new 2014 Tundras. Get it fast and fair at Pat Loeb Toyota of McKinney.com. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorby, your host, broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeartMedia Radio Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. I'm speaking with Keith King, President, National Veterans Business Development Council, uh, NVD, excuse me, NVBDC.org. Uh, Keith, we were talking about how corporate America is really getting behind you. The Billion Dollar Roundtable, General Motors, Kellogg's, to name a few, AT&T and Walmart, they're all standing up and making an effort to support our veterans and empower them to go out and create commerce through employment by building their companies with the guidance of what you and your team are bringing to the, to the table. One of the things that I wanted to delve into and you wanted to bring to the table, actually, was um, what's going on with minorities and, and, and women in, in this sector? Is there something special that's starting to evolve in, in this area? Yeah, what, what we have been saying, and first I want to thank uh, the National Minority Supplier Development Council and the, the women, it's called WeBank, uh, for their help and support in helping us to learn our craft, if you will, in, in the sense of what they have got 35 to 40 years experience in in doing certification of the women or minority-owned companies, and they were kind enough to say, 
you know, come on, sit down. We'll teach you what you need to know to meet corporate standards. So first I want to thank them. But the point that we were making to them in the United States military today is the highest percentage of women ever and the highest percentage of minorities ever. And when you start looking at what the veteran status is, it is an earned status in the sense that you, you know, have to serve the United States military and you have to serve honorably, and that is a status that is earned. So when we went to them and said, how many of your members are, in fact, veterans? The answer was they didn't know. It was not something that they were counting. It wasn't something they were looking for. But since they've been working with us, all of a sudden they're going back to a lot of their members and polling them and asking, hey, are you in fact a veteran? Do you in fact meet all the criteria, 51% ownership, operation and control of the company, those things? And they came back to us and said, you know, this makes perfect sense for us to be working with you because we can put together a program we call Fast Track. And that actually was something that, the again, the major corporations asked us to, to consider. And frankly, uh, it was somewhat their idea in the sense of saying, hey, wait a minute. If we have a company that we're already working with and is a part of our supplier diversity chain, and that's a woman-owned company, will you accept that certification? And we said, yeah, of course we will, because what we will need to do is certify them as veterans. We know how to do that. That's a different process, but all of that paperwork in the sense of all your documentation, your your financials, your IRS, all of the ownership and all of the stuff that we have to look at, we don't have to do on a fast track basis because we'll accept the certification from the women and or from the minority um, councils. And then we just simply move them up uh, very quickly into the fast track process, certify, in fact, that they are veterans, and we can then issue them a certification. And we have already done that now in one, two, three different cases where we've already fast-tracked companies. And so instead of a process that could take, you know, two, three, four, five, six months, we can do this in less than 30 days if we have all the right paperwork. Wow. Okay, so I can see that we should be we should be seeing a big move in more more minority, more women owned businesses through through your processes. It, it seems to me they get pretty pretty well neglected once they're out of the service, um, and they've they've done you know their service to the country. Then they're they're really not getting the kind of treatment. Do you see that that is starting to do? become more of an even playing field with relative to what to male owned businesses? Well, yeah, and, 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 and again, I want to acknowledge and thank you know General Motors and, and the Billion Dollar Roundtable, Kellogg's in particular, because they're the ones who stepped up right from the get-go and said, hey, um, you know, if we're going to you know, insist on a certification program, well, then we're going to help you implement it. And so these are the guys who have taken the lead to this point. And obviously, we're out looking for more help, more support, more of these corporations signing on. Uh, it's what we call a letter of support. But what it is is it's in writing from their corporation saying, yes, we accept you know, the NVBDC certification uh, for veteran-owned businesses. And we're adding you know, veteran-owned businesses to our supplier diversity uh, classification because what one of the big fights that we had, if you will, is what you're talking about, Michael, is basically just being ignored. I mean, if you went to the website for suppliers, and most of them, they'll immediately say, are you a woman, are you a minority? And none of them, or very little of them, had said, are you a veteran? That has changed dramatically in the last two years, and we hope that that's going to continue to change because um, we've been in a lot of meetings where um, I'll walk into a meeting and, and, and the other people in the room will say, okay, everybody be aware that the, the veterans are now in the room. Well, I laugh and take that as, as a, a source of pride. You know? <laughs> well, we wouldn't be here without them. We know that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, no, and thank you. Let me, let's move on to federal programs. What, yes. What's out there? Well, the thing about the federal programs, and, and again, one of the things that happened when this law was written back in 1999 that actually established the classification of veteran-owned and disabled veteran-owned 
And disabled veteran owned is what's called service disabled. In other words, your disability was in fact related to your service in the military. And that distinction was made. But the fact that that was passed back in 1999 and the 3% goal was set, um, set to reach the 3% of federal spend, that um, was not reached until actually 2013. So you can see it took us, what, 14 years to be able to reach that 3% spend in the federal government. And frankly, that's because of certain departments of the federal government was well over the 3%. Not every department in the government has met the 3%. Some of them are nowhere near it. Um, and in fact, there's been a lot of problems in trying to make sure that each department reaches that 3% spend. But the fact that we reached it, we're happy about that. We're thankful for that. That obviously is an indication that they're trying, and we appreciate it. But that same 3% that basically equated to $15 billion in the federal government is worth $80 billion in corporate America, and that's, again, part of the motivation of why we're working with corporate. But to backtrack to the feds, there is a program out there that does certify veteran-owned businesses by the VA. It's the logical place because, obviously, the VA would have your records. The problem with that program is, is is that there's just too many companies who, one, have no desire to work with the federal government. It takes a lot to do business with the federal government in the sense of how you operate your company, how you market your company, all that requirement. And frankly, there's just a, you know, a lot of guys, when they come out of the military, they just say, look, I've done my time. I don't want to be involved. But that doesn't mean that they're not out running a company. It's just being they don't want to do business with the federal government. And I think we understand that, uh, you know, quite well. But the point being is, is that by law, they can only certify small companies. And that was really a hole, if you will. Look at all these companies, the medium-sized companies, the large companies, all the companies who don't want to do business with the federal government. And that's really what motivated us to go ahead and put our certification program together. Keith, we, we've got to bring the interview to a close. I want to thank you so much for being our guest on the show. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate the opportunity. Mine too. All right, Keith King, President, National Veterans Business Development Council, nvbdc.org. And special thanks to 1-800-PUBLICRELATIONS.COM for all their PR and media support. And thank you all for tuning in and listening to our show. You really make it work. Talk to you soon. for listening to today's program. The Traders Network is a production of Yorba.tv LLC and is streamed live and archived at yorbamedia.com. We invite you to listen live, join in the conversation real time, and link to the Traders Network on the Yorba Media website. All opinions in this show are that of the presenters or their guests and not of this station's owners or management. These opinions are for educational purposes only and should not be interpreted as investment or financial advice. All investments involve risk and past performance is not indicative of future results. Tune into the Traders Network every Monday through Friday afternoon here on 1190 AM.